Good evening. I'll try this again. Good evening. Good evening. I'm from a Baptist church. They talk back. <laughs> so if you don't talk back, I keep talking. First of all, I want to thank you for having me here uh, this evening. It's very important for me to be here because what you're doing is exactly how things get done. And folks don't realize that a lot. Um, you can make an impact in your community by doing various things, by serving on various boards, committees, school boards, attending meetings at school boards, and city council are very important. I have a guy here today, I think he attends every meeting in Camden City, Felix, does not miss a meeting in Camden City. And um, by going to these meetings, and by attending uh, school board meetings and uh, city council meetings, you become better informed. One of the problems we have I find is that people are not informed all the time about what's actually taking place either in city council or in the school board. They'll see a little one sentence or a headline and take it from there or somebody will tell them something, they believe it. But it's more important for you to attend school board meetings and also city council meetings that way you ask the questions. Community involvement, such small things as coaching, coaching baseball, football, basketball, soccer. That's how you get involved in your community. And also, it helps you by hearing what your neighbors are thinking about what's going on in your community. A lot of times we go up to Trenton, well, let's go back to Camden on city council. I passed quite a few ordinances in Camden City. And most of them were driven by citizens, such as late night food establishments. We had some issues in Camden City where things were taking place at all night eateries. And neighbors were complaining about that. So ordinance was written in reference to that to close everybody down at, I think, 11 o'clock at night. Well, I say that's not quite fair. Number one, you still close everybody down. That means gas stations that sell food could not sell them no more. Path market stayed open late at night, couldn't sell no more. So I did an ordinance where it said if an establishment was in a neighborhood, that it closed down by a certain time. That didn't affect the path marks, didn't affect the people who were in business districts. That ordinance uh, passed and has stood the test of time. I did came from citizens, though, who were tired of these late night eateries in their neighborhoods that are causing various problems and the police are going back over and over again. Another idea came to me was from a business person about sidewalk cafes. We had ordinances in Camden in reference to sidewalk cafes. You couldn't have one. I got an ordinance on the books. They can do that now. Here was one that's really funny. It may be funny to some of you, it wasn't funny to this uh, lady. Got a call from a senior citizen. It was about a portable toilet. One of her neighbors had a party that got a toilet put in there and stayed there for a whole week. Oh, yeah. And on the books, there were no ordinance about that whatsoever. So, of course, I put an ordinance on the books that had to be removed in 24 hours after the function. Another idea that actually came from a resident. So that's where you get involved, getting things done of that nature. Here I am now in the assembly. And one of my bills in the assembly, and you may find this strange too, it's about, it's about civil service. I'll give you an example. We have people who serve in the military. They're deployed overseas. They're on the civil service list. The list expires while they're overseas. They have to come back home and take the test over again to go on the list. My bill says that if you are deployed, you're on the list to be hired, that list expires, you're going to the next list. Which to me seems very easy. But I've got a little problem from civil service about this. It, it says it's going to be too hard to do this. It's not hard at all because it doesn't affect that many people. It's not fair for a person who should have been hired as a policeman or a fireman who's serving us overseas and this expires, they come back home, they can't get hired. They have to go through the whole process again, which means paying for the test again, taking the test, and hoping to go on the list again. So my bill says you get on the list. The dispute we're having also with this is where are they placed on the list? I say if you're number five on the list when it expires, the new list you're number five on. But I'm hearing an argument where maybe your score is not as high as that person on the list. So I may have to compromise. I found that in Trenton. And the um, box will tell you this also that all bills that are submitted don't end up the way they're submitted. I found out also in Trenton, it's not Burger King. Remember the commercial Burger King, have it your way? In Trenton, you don't have it your way. 
There's a lot of compromises. So as long as a bill can be compromised and you have the essence of what you want, you can get it through. So I may have to compromise on this bill saying that a person go back on the list according to their score as to their, their placement. That's, I want to do that. Also something else driven by citizens is about senior citizens. And um, we have an issue with senior citizens where they are paying the school tax. And they are saying, why should I pay the school tax if I have no children in the school? Have you ever heard that one before? Well, I feel that way also. However, the question I get asked all the time from the administration, where do you find the money to replace that? Once the senior doesn't have, uh, pay, have to pay that tax. So I'm willing to go and say, they don't have to pay the complete school portion of their tax. Give them a break on that. You have people um, 70, 60 years old and over who are paying the school tax. And as you well know, I found out some, some stats. You have senior citizens who get no pension, you get Social Security, and it totals about $12,000 a year. Now, $12,000 a year, they pay almost $7,000 in property taxes. That's not right. So we've got to do something to help our seniors. So all the things I've mentioned to you here today are not me sitting back and saying, what can I think of to make a law? It comes from citizens giving you ideas, citizens' involvement. And I have a very uh, tough situation um, at home. My wife, she's on the school board in Camden. And she's happy to be the vice president. You have a note also? <laughs> no notes. <laughs> That's okay. Welcome. And I have some very tough situations at home when it comes to school reform. She's on the school board. And I sponsored a couple of bills that maybe have some conflict within our household. Uh, one is the Opportunity Scholarship Act, and one was the Urban Hope Act, which I voted yes for. And we may find this really surprising, and people find it hard to believe. My wife's on the school board. I'm in the assembly now. We do not discuss issues at all at home. She handles school board and handles the state issues. And sometimes we know what's going on in our own house, what we're doing. I got a call one time, somebody said, congratulations. I said, for what, your wife? I said, what about? She's vice president of the school board. I said, I didn't know that. <laughs> that was the night before that I was told that she was the vice president of the school board because we really don't discuss that. Everybody here who's married, raise your hand. Was that? enough being married without bringing politics into it? <laughs> you didn't ask how many people were divorced. Nah, <laughs> I don't want to go there. <laughs> Maybe you got politics involved. I don't know. But I'm talking to the married folks. Sometimes it's very difficult. You know, it's, it's a challenge to be married. We all know that. But to bring politics into it makes it very difficult sometimes. So we have decided, for the most part, um, to try to keep it separate. But sometimes it does intertwine it all. Once again, I want to thank you for inviting me here. I hope it gave you some um, enlightenment to you whatsoever. And um, so you, I guess you were up next. I made it easy for you. They're still, they're still awake. <laughs> and thank you for your time, and God bless you all. <laughs>